Okay, hi guys, uh, Jackie M. How you doing? Just give me a couple of seconds to get uh, started. Uh, no, I don't want to scan. And uh, let's see if I am live. Facebook. Okay. Yes. Okay. Where are we? <coughs> Live now at twitch.tv slash Jackie M. Food. Um, how to make Bobia Twitch creative Twitch and uh, let's hop over to Facebook pin up here pin to the top of the page and let me just just bear with me guys um, and just say hello if you're watching this uh, on Twitch let me just share this on my timeline live now um, making Bob the uh, post uh, Okay, so this will be a little bit awkward if this doesn't turn out today. But uh, hi guys, uh, thanks for joining me. Say hello, let me just actually hassle my Discord community. Everyone, live now. Okay. Hey, what is that thing that's sticking out? Is that my, yep, yeah, that is my Rode microphone in the way. Okay. Okay, hi guys, uh, Jackie M here. And as usual, I'm doing uh, <coughs> my uh, one of three live cooking videos on Twitch per week. And um, fourth one on Saturdays usually, except I don't have it on this Saturday, but usually every Saturday evening, if you're free, join us, 10 p.m. Sydney time, GMT plus 10. And I do, we do a community chat, a campfire story, so everyone sends in their uh, stories and experiences and that sort of stuff, and I read them out live on air. But uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I cook live on air. My name is Jackie M. I am a former restauranter, and uh, my specialty is primarily Malaysian food, but more broadly, Southeast Asian uh, food, uh, street food in particular. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to Lenovo Australia uh, and New Zealand for the laptop I use for my live streaming which is a, an IdeaPad Y700 uh, uh, which is a gaming laptop and also a shout out to Rode Microphones for the microphones I use for my live streaming. Alright guys so today we are going to be making something that um, <laughs> uh, I haven't made for years and years not since I closed down my restaurant and probably for quite a while before that as well because it just ended up being such a pain to make. But it is something that I'm, uh, I used to be famous for. This is something called popia. Uh, popia is basically a Malaysian fresh spring roll, right? Uh, you know of Vietnamese uh, fresh spring rolls is different to that, okay? You know about like uh, uh, fried spring rolls, so it is different to that. Uh, fresh spring roll, the defining feature of uh, popia is essentially like the popia skin, the spring roll skin, which is made fresh and then you... Uh, um, Okay, sorry. <laughs> and then you uh, essentially, um, uh, yeah, you make it fresh and there's a technique to it which pretty much uh, everybody wants to know how to make because it's, uh, it's not an easy skill to acquire, right? So uh, it's something I do know how to make, I used to. <laughs> now, I did have a couple of like um, 
uh, tricks up my sleeve back in the day to make popia because you need to be able to maintain the temperature of your skillet. Uh, Sleepy Mario, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> cool. <laughs> so this is a uh, uh, essentially the way you cook popia skin is that you have to have your griddle uh, within a very specific temperature range. All right, a narrow temperature range. And what I used to do was I used to use a laser beam thermometer to beam onto my skillet. Once it hit that temperature, I would then like, um, you know, put some of the dough mixture on it very quickly, uh, cook it up and then remove it and then let it cool down while because it, the, the heat will continue to rise on the skillet. And now to get another skillet, again, do the same thing and then switch out the skillets. All right. By the time I finish the second uh, spring roll skin, hopefully the skillet from the first one will have cooled back down to within that temperature range. But essentially the way I could tell was by using the laser beam thermometer. Okay, I don't have a laser thermometer today, so it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Uh, so uh, let me just grab a couple of things to get ready. Sorry, I'm a little bit disorganized because I'm not feeling the best today. So I'm a little bit dosed up with medication. And also I've just uh, woken up from a couple of hours sleep just to kind of like make sure I was, uh, you know, from Apod, how you doing? Good to see you. Right, so anyway, uh, the spring roll skin, like I said, it's very, uh, it's a little bit of a fine art and I know a lot of people want to know how to make it because my first ever video on YouTube, my first ever how-to video on YouTube was back in 2011, goes to how long ago it was, and back in that, that, back in that time, I, you know, I, I basically was just a restaurant owner and um, I shot a video, I wasn't even on camera that whole time, it was like how to make a popular skin and really bad audio because it just used my crappy laptop um, microphone and like I said I'm not on camera at all and the, I was trying to film it while I was uh, making the skin with one hand and holding the camera with the other so everything about it was bad but uh, to this day it's my most watched video on YouTube all right it's close to like which isn't much for I, I know like people get crazy views on YouTube but I, I got like nearly 300,000 views on that particular video, how to make popular skin. So I know it's something that a lot of people are, are try to uh, <laughs> try to figure out. But here it is. Let me just... And like I said, this is a, you know, made from like, uh, basically, the, the skin is going to be made fresh and this is it's made from this dough all right and the dough all it is is just uh flour um i use what you want ideally is strong flour right um i had a look because i haven't made it for so long i couldn't quite remember how it was made but um what you want is a uh, strong flour and in my original video i actually specified using plain flour uh, topped up with some gluten flour, okay, which you guys will have seen me use every now and then here. And gluten flour, just to reiterate for those of you who are new, is uh, essentially this uh, basically very, very high gluten flour that you can buy at Asian grocery stores for uh, producing uh, vegetarian like mock meat stuff, right? So I used to buy bags of these. Um, and then like add a little bit of that high gluten flour into regular plain flour to make it a strong flour Okay, a cheaper version of it uh, I got downgraded. How why did you get downgraded? <laughs> Hundred megabits NBN a port where are you again? Are you in um, black town or something like that? Okay, so this uh, essentially is the um, uh, mixture of like uh, two cups of water, uh, 500 grams of flour, like I said, strong flour essentially, and a little bit of oil, a tablespoon of oil, a little bit of salt. Um, and also for today's exercise, I actually put a, a, a tablespoon of tapioca flour into it, okay, which I, from memory, I used to do sometimes and not always in my restaurant. Um, and then what you wanted to do and I've done this ahead of time. What you wanted to do was basically um, mix up that mixture until you get like a gluggy porridgey mixture, and then you want to let it rest covered. Uh, you can cover it with like a, a you know something airtight, 
or you can actually like uh, pour water over the surface of it okay so that it's immersed in water and then at the end of like several hours you want to tip out all the water and then you work it in a dough mixer on the lowest possible set setting on your dough mixer all right and then what uh, if you work it when you start working you're gonna think this looks like porridge it's never gonna turn out you let it go for like 10 minutes or so it starts turning out and I'll bring the dough mixer over just so you can see what I mean I'm just gonna go wash my hands in the meantime as well Okay, Cronulla. Oh, Cronulla Shire. That's right. Yeah, I, I keep I, I I keep getting you confused with someone else who's over in Blacktown. Um, okay, so I have actually, like I said, um, thrown it back into like basically worked it in the dough mixer for about ten minutes. I'm just going to work it a little bit more just so you can see what it looks like, right? reason I've never really kind of like hung out in Cronulla even though I guess it's probably the closest major beach to where I am um, but uh, I think I went there one time uh, last year and it seems like fairly it feels quite deserted don't get great because of moving places oh okay where did you move from or to Nice restaurants, is that right? I'm trying to, I, I don't remember seeing restaurants. I don't know if that was uh, Cronulla Beach proper or one of the ones around it. Okay, so like I said, this already works for about 10 minutes. I just wanna, you want this on the lowest possible setting. And one of the reasons I just now remember why I actually stopped making it in my restaurant um, towards the end was because my dough mixer I had at the restaurant started playing up so that I couldn't actually get it to spin on a low setting. Um, but this is my new sunbeam here, right? And it does work. Okay, I want to. Okay. So essentially, the low um, setting, and you're I'm using a what's called uh, in Kenwood speak, it's called a K hook, but for sunbeam, basically, essentially, it's not like the dough stick, but the one that looks like. Um, uh, it, it looks like it's got like a, a zigzag uh, pattern on it, all right? <laughs> Cronulla is starting to get the Gold Coast feel. Is that right? <laughs> As in tacky and uh, overpriced. In the south of Taiwan, the city called Kaohsiung, basically to another place within the city. Okay, right, south of Taiwan, Kaohsiung. What's Taiwan like? I've never been to Taiwan. It's my kid. I know what's in the in the room and he's being a little bit vocal so he might want to come out soonish <laughs> Cronulla strikes me as being very uh it's like the last bastion of like uh you know because where I'm at I'm in Congra and I'm just like a 15 minute walk to the beach and the closest beach to me feels like it feels like I could be in Lebanon because there's a lot of uh you know uh, Arabs <laughs> Arabic people there but Cronulla feels to me like it's just like very very uh, very Caucasian um, whereas Bondi is like full of tourists so it's very mixed right and I, I up until like uh, about a year and a half ago I lived in Bondi but uh, oops did it just stop why did it stop okay didn't mean to do that we stick to the south, white Australian. <laughs> yeah, Granada's got a reputation. <laughs> okay, basically you want it on low setting so that the the gluten, you know, gluten is basically what creates that like stretchiness in bread and in any kind of dough, right? So you want to work the gluten till the 
that this lump of dough becomes really, really stretchy and rubbery, right? So that ultimately you can, um, uh, yeah, you can make like a, a stretchy uh, spring roll skin. Okay, like I said, there's a technique to it and I haven't done it for years and years, so fingers crossed it works out okay, right? Lebs are west, Asians are north. Yeah, Asians are north, that's right. <laughs> Lebs are west. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Lebs are west and like they're, they're coming on to what is this, Brighton Le Sands, I promise you, because I used to walk 10Ks, right, uh, just for the heck of it, from Cogra down to uh, President's Avenue, and then I'll just keep walking up and down sort of thing, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it seriously feels like yeah, you're in Lebanon. Okay, so the other ingredients we're going to use, you saw me use this the other day, this is what's called yam bean, okay, it's like a also known as hikama in America, and it's known as sakot in Cantonese, and it's known as uh, sengkuang in Malay, alright? And we've got some cucumber, which we're just going to shred. We've got some eggs, which we're going to make an omelette out of. And then we've got... Uh, Sydney has changed her lip to all my life. Okay. Taiwan is islandish. Islandish is summer here, 10 months a year. Oh, is that right? Food is some mixture of Fujian and Japanese. I had sushi earlier today. So, Sleepy Mario, are you Taiwanese or um, 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 Dutch? Oh, okay. Okay, right. How did you end up in Taiwan though? And can you speak the language? Like, um, can you speak Hokkien or? Mandarin or something like that. I'm trying to actually um, kind of skill up on Mandarin. I mean, like, I have the advantage because I speak a couple of Chinese dialects and I guess, like, even though I never spoke Mandarin, um, I've had the benefit of being around people who do sort of things. So when I'm listening to tapes on, like, Mandarin, um, you know, spoken Mandarin sort of thing, I can replicate the accent fairly easily sort of thing. So it's the vocabulary that pulls me back a bit, right? So you're learning things a lot about like say like some of the conversations that I'm learning is like, oh, uh, I work at the American Embassy. I, I studied like politics at university and all that. So words like American Embassy and politics and all that, I don't know. I studied economics. I don't know what economics is. But you know, other words like I studied and you know, and those sort of things I know, sort of things. So I do have like a little bit of a head start compared to an average, like uh, I guess, a uh, non-Asian speaker. I'm too lang lazy to learn languages. I love that. I love the idea of learning languages. I studied languages at university, so I've got a, I've got a few. I'm an accountant. Okay, right. You should be able to learn it really quickly then. I hope. So. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, you know, the thing is, like, if you want to learn how to write uh, uh, Chinese, that's a different ball game altogether. To me, it's easier to learn how to write Japanese because it's actually got an, uh, an alphabet you can kind of like use to put um, words together, right? Whereas Chinese, you basically have to learn each word meaning individually. Numbers is my thing. I I hate I hate accounting. Accounting. <laughs> I, I I like I have zero interest in like my finances, money, and all, all that sort of stuff. Writing is not that hard because you have computers these days. That's what everyone says. I studied political science here in Taiwan, sinology back in the Netherlands. All right. Okay. Okay. If you know the pronunciation and can read, then you can write it on the computer. Yeah, what I haven't learned are the accents, right? So, like, say if I write, if I know the pronunciation and I type into the computer, like, uh, do you, you know, like, do you have to know, like, you know, whether it's the, the, the accent is right or whatever to, to pick the right word? Because, you know, like, the same, the same sounding word, you know, can be, like, a few different things, right, in Chinese. I started IT then went into accounting. Oh, okay, okay, right. <laughs> IT I can handle, because I, I used to be an IT consultant. But accounting I have zero interest in. So what sort of accounting do you do? I didn't I didn't study IT at uni though, I did it after university. So I actually did my IT uh, um, certifications after I started working in IT, really. Back in the day, it was like such a uh, 
it was so easy to get into IT, they would hire you, you know, uh, without experience, basically, or without training, you know. But uh, I, I actually only got my certifications because I decided I wanted to go to England to work, right? In Australia, I could have con continued contracting as an IT contractor without having, um, with just work experience, without having to, uh, you see how, how, um, how robbery this is? Yeah. But yeah, before I went to England, I did my Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer certification um, and um, I, I, I got certified as a Novell administrator, even though I never handled any Novell systems, really. <laughs> and then when I, was in, when I was in England, I did a Cisco certification. Again, it's just like, just to have a few letters after your name, you know, have something to put down on your CV. I never actually used any of those skills. Everything I needed to know, I learned on the job. Hey, Sammy. In some mainland Chinese, mostly bookkeeping. Okay, in some mainland Chinese input methods, you don't need any terms at all. Is that right? Okay, Cisco. C oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I got that. Cisco CCNA. <laughs> Networking and wireless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, all the usual stuff. Okay, so this is what it looks like, right? I'm just going to hold it up over here so you can see it. So the idea is you want to get it so rubbery that you can pick up the whole dough like this. Okay, you can see it. Okay. And like I said, it does require you to essentially soak the, the flour and water mixture for a few hours before you then work it in a dough mixer. So this is the kind of springiness you want, okay? <laughs> you see it okay so the next hard thing is actually what you want to do is you want to grab this and you want to heat up a skillet to the right temperature and then you smear this on the skillet okay you balance it with one hand you smear it on the skillet and then once it cooks up which is going to be like just a few seconds you peel it off with the other hand and then you keep going okay Farag, how you doing? <laughs> Got sick of traveling into Sydney with IT work. I know, right? Yeah, that's tough. So you work, um, you work in Cronulla now, or uh... okay. The thing is, like, um, if you guys ever watch Master Chef Australia, the first ever Master Chef um, was won by this woman called Julie Goodwin. If you Google her, Julie Goodwin. I've never watched any reality cooking show or anything, but I did watch like the last five minutes of the first season of MasterChef because there was so much hype around it. So I saw Julie Goodwin being announced as the winner. And then at the end of it, they open like kind of like they show off stage, like her family comes out to meet her and her husband was just crying and all that. And I looked at the husband and I said, hang on, that's Michael Goodwin from work. <laughs> um, back when I used to work at Rothschild, we used to work together in IT. And the funny thing was, Michael is a great guy, by the way. I haven't talked to him at all um, since I left. It was a long time ago when we were working uh, Rothschild together. But we were recruited together into the IT department at Rothschild. Um, <clears throat> and he's like one of the funniest guys ever. But he uh, and his family lived bought a house in the central coast this is you're talking about like 20 years ago 20 years yeah, more than 20 years ago so imagine even back in those days they were commuting like from the central coast into the city i was thinking holy crap but nowadays it seems quite normal for people who commute uh, from the central coast but yeah yeah i was thinking like i don't know how you guys can do it so let's put this around the back and i was going to work it a little bit more but you get the idea so it becomes this springy rubbery ball right Miranda, okay, so not far, okay. Kmart, oh, okay, right, right, cool. Do you get any discounts at Kmart then? Okay, so by the way guys, if you're watching this anywhere else at all, because I'm multi-streaming this on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Periscope, as well as Twitch, right? Um, if you've got any questions at all, hit me up over at Twitch, all right? I'm only monitoring the chat in Twitch itself, which is my Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash JackieMFood, 
and you need to follow me on Twitch as well if you want to be in the running for any prizes, any giveaways. I'm actually just right in the process of organizing. This is going to be for Sydney, uh, my Sydney, uh, not Sydney, my New South Wales audience only, all right? Uh, I'm actually giving away some Ayam uh, sauce packs, but uh, they're still on their way to me, so I'm not giving them away tonight. But especially if you're watching and you're based in New South Wales, this is a good time to follow me at Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food. Um, it's free to follow me, right? Even though there's a subscribe button, which um, you can subscribe as well, but it means you don't see any advertisements and all that, but you don't have to basically. Uh, auto mod profanity. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I like sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just have it allow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that would be a good prize, I think, for people, especially just like uh, venturing out into like um, Asian cooking and that sort of stuff. So they're, they're giving away some sauces um, to my audience. Okay, so what I want to do is peel this and then cut it into like matchsticks sort of thing. And then we're going to cook it up. Very similar to how I cooked up the uh, filling for the dumplings I made on my last broadcast, right? But this time I'm going to cut it thicker as well. Uh, hold on, knife. Okay, let me just go and dig up my knife. spring rolls <laughs> yeah these spring rolls we're not actually gonna fry up the skin so they're meant to be um, eaten like as fresh spring rolls like raw you can fry it up in all honesty because there is such a thing as fried popia but really the the one that really um, kind of uh, stands out from the crowd is what's called the, the fresh popia um, with the fresh spring roll skin all right um, yeah so let's cut this up. I'm not doing too much of it. I do have another yam bean, sikama, sarkot, whatever you want to call it, um, in my stash. But I think I'm not going to get carried away and make a big stash. By the way, guys, if you're in uh, Sydney this weekend, I have two events on. Saturday and Sunday, I have a uh, hot food stall over at the uh, first ever Rivendell flower show which is over in Concord on the Thomas Walker estate right and I will have two stalls there one of them selling hot food which probably will just be my noodles <laughs> and the other stall will be uh, showcasing the blue powder that you guys have seen me use over the last week right uh, so my friend Li Heng who is the person responsible for bringing the blue flower uh, products into the country she will be running that other store but they're both under under my my branding essentially so there's that and then on the Sunday while my staff continue to run the store at the flower show for a second day I'm gonna be dashing off to Cabramatta where I will be on stage I'm not selling food there I'm on stage in Cabramatta doing some cooking demonstrations over the course of the day so uh, come around and say hello if you're around Cabramatta uh, Moon Festival is what the event's called and there's, uh, there's going to be, if you've got kids or whatever, there's going to be, the Minions are going to be there, Peppa Pig's going to be there and also Dami, the uh, Dami is, uh, look I don't watch reality TV, I know she sings, she's Korean and she either won or was uh, one of the finalists of some Australian <laughs> singing show, I don't know which one so I'm sorry uh, if I sound disrespectful Dami I think that's how you pronounce her name. Someone had to tell me. Uh, so I'm just peeling the skin off of this. Okay. And also I have more of my road microphones to give away. My next giveaway is going to be when I hit 1900 follows at the moment I'm under 1850 so when I hit 1900 I'm gonna be giving away another road microphone 
And also, I still have a couple of like Lenovo mini speakers to give away. And the last winner of my winning speaker, I messaged you um, because I don't think your address is complete that you sent through to me. It's missing a street number. Um, so I need you to get back to me about it before I can send it out. All right. And for everyone, the 10 of you guys who won the Blue Flower products, all your parcels are on the way. Okay. Courtesy of mybluetea.com.au. Um, that's my friend Lee Heng's company. So you should get them uh, pretty soon, right? Okay. So I've sliced these up. Now I want to cut them into strips. So these, like I said, uh, they're called yam bean in Australia. But uh, you can find them, your, your best bet and your cheapest bet is to get them in Cabramatta. Okay, so uh, when I first came to Australia, you couldn't get this. So it's thanks to the Asian community in Cabramatta that we're now able to get this. But back in the day when my family tried to make this, first of all, uh, first of all, I'm the first one. I'm the only one in my family who knows how to make the skin, all right? And um, second of all, um, <coughs> they, because they don't know how to make the skin, they used to actually buy frozen spring roll skin, right? Those big sheets you can pick up at Asian grocery stores. They used to use those, okay? So you get the idea. It's kind of like a similar, but they, they're, they're cut like into squares. These ones are circular. And also the ones that you buy from your Asian grocery store, the mass produced ones, they're quite, they're almost too rubbery, okay? And they're quite like uh, dense in texture. This one's a little bit more porous. But you know, those are the concessions you make when you leave a country like Malaysia and you come over to a country like Australia never having learned how to make all these things uh, back in your childhood, right? So that's what my sister used to do. She used to buy frozen spring roll skins and use them as the wrapper. And also instead of hickama, cause you couldn't find it back in the day in Australia, uh, they used to use choco, all right? Choco is like this Australian like um, vegetable. But to me, choco is uh, too slippery and slimy, okay? In all honesty, if I couldn't find jicama, what I would attempt to use <coughs> would be like nashi pe, all right? So uh, jicama or sengkuang or sakot or yambi essentially has the same texture and crunch, you know, and yeah, basically feel as a nashi pear, except nashi pear is sweet, that's the thing. This one is has got a little bit of sweetness in it, but not, uh, not as sweet, okay? So you would have to adjust your recipe just to kind of like balance out the flavors. So again, if you've got any questions, guys, um, post them here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food. Um, if you're watching anywhere else at all, uh, yeah, just um, thanks for watching and hello and whatever. Um, if I don't respond, if I'm ignoring you, I'm not deliberately ignoring you. It's just I can't see any, uh, any chat messages, any comments, except uh, on Twitch right now, okay? I'll go back and watch them. I'll go back and check them after the fact best I can but in the meantime if you want me to uh, respond live just hop over to twitch.tv slash Jackie M food yeah I've never seen Malaysian spring rolls until soon yeah fingers crossed like I say fingers crossed it works okay so this is all chopped up okay this is gonna like shrink down a lot after I cook it up okay and I'm gonna cook it with some of this dried shrimp you saw me use the other day okay so this um, like um, salted dried shrimp and you can again pick it up at your local Asian grocery store this is the cheapest variety you can find okay because they're tiny tiny dried shrimp the larger ones tend to be quite uh, quite expensive nowadays 
Okay, so ideally you want to soak it, like just rinse it with a bit of water. I went, the other day when I made uh, the other patch, I actually used too much of it. Goes to show a lot of recipes like you find even, whoops, even in cookbooks um, aren't necessarily the most accurate. So this time for this amount, I'm only going to use like about two tablespoons of uh, dried shrimp here. I'm just going to hop around the back and just, uh, just rinse it out. And also I need some water for my next bit as well. Okay, so we're gonna uh, cook up the filling. Uh, I've got a cucumber which I'm gonna just shred as well. I might use the shredder for the cucumber. So I'm just using a mandolin here. I, um, ideally you want a, um, uh, a larger setting, okay? But I don't have the other mandolin here with me. But this just speeds things up a little bit. So we're gonna make all the different filling ingredients and usually in all honesty if you are if if you're not averse to pork like I am you usually would have Chinese um, those wax Chinese sausages as well right which you would fry up um, and also you would have like pork lard okay I don't eat pork at all so I don't put anything porky in my <laughs> in my popia but to me you know it tastes just fine all right But yeah, every time I do anything non-pork that's based on the Chinese recipe, I get abused on it about it online. But a lot of Chinese get really upset about it being compromised and whatever. But you know, you want to learn how to cook <laughs> from Jackie M. That's one of the things you're gonna have to uh, tolerate. No pork in my recipes. Okay. okay. So the cucumber is gonna stay raw. Okay. The two things we're going to cook up are the um, egg omelettes and also the hikama filling, okay? Hey, see whiskey, how you doing? Lap Chong, that's it. Lap Chong, that's the one. <laughs> People get upset about it, yeah. See, um, it can get a little bit political. Hang on. <coughs> it can get a little bit political because Malaysia, uh, where a lot of these dishes originate from, um, Malaysia is multicultural, right? But the dominant, uh, 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 the dominant, uh, dominant race there are the Malays who are by default Muslims and they don't eat pork, right? So like you get the big chain restaurants in Malaysia <coughs> and the big chain hotels in Malaysia. Um, they, they essentially to get the, you know, the Malay, the Malay um, um, patronage, right? Sometimes they make their Chinese dishes non-pork and the Chinese in Malaysia are, they feel like it's selling out, you know? <laughs> but like I say, there's a lot more to it and that sort of thing, but uh, people get, um, upset about like kind of like basically ceding to um, both like economic and maybe some level of uh, political pressure I guess okay, I'm just heating this I'm just gonna first fry up the uh, egg omelette but I'll just put this away I wanna I wanna clean things up as I go along <laughs> Because there's a you, you hear now and then like um, stories about like how um, you know there, there was one time last year I think it was during Ramadan which is the Muslim fasting month that uh, one teacher at this public school in Malaysia um, because the Muslim kids couldn't eat during the day 
at lunchtime, she would not let the non-Muslim kids eat. Like if they wanted to eat, they told her she'd basically send them off to go eat in the toilets so that the their eating at lunchtime would not kind of like be, um, you know, cause their Muslim counterparts to be tempted or whatever sort of thing, you know. So that created a little bit of a stir and that sort of stuff. But you always hear little stories like that about how uh, basically your rights as a non-Muslim get impe impinged upon, right? But I don't eat pork not because I'm a Muslim. I don't eat pork because I don't like pork, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm just, you know, you can get a little bit fancy and season your egg and whatever. I don't usually bother, right? So, but if you want to season it, you can put a dash of white pepper in it and then you can put a pinch of uh, chicken powder or salt or whatever else, yeah? The kettle of Kayad, how you doing? <laughs> ah, Petra, thanks for hosting. Boca Burgers, what happened with Boca Burgers? Kettle of Kayad, where have you been all this time? Okay, I'm just heating up the pan here, right? And like I said, guys, um, hopefully the hopefully the spring roll skin works out later on. But the one thing I'm missing is uh, my uh, laser thermometer, which was how I used to determine whether the pan was too hot or too cold to be able to do the spring roll skin properly. Okay. Mariana moved to the US state of Georgia. Oh, okay, I heard some stories from Malaysian students mainly concerning schools, uni and the likes. Yeah, <laughs> you'll know about it then in that case. It gets, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's Marietta Diner? Is that in Georgia? I've never been to Georgia. Sounds like a nice place. Though. Okay, it does feel like my gas is running low, so I'm gonna get the other one ready. Dad is doing great. His leg is still patched up, but it's healing. That's good to know. <laughs> that, well, I don't know if any of you guys were in during the campfire when Kettle of Kaya, uh, <laughs> Kettle of Kaya was around. That was a pretty intense campfire stories. He still swears up and down that he wasn't uh, making it up, but <laughs> I don't think I don't know. It's been has it been two months? I don't know. God, I don't have to worry about gunshots in the night. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna cut those into thin strips afterwards. Okay, so let's, I don't know if I should use this or use a different one. Okay, why not just use this? Okay, so we're gonna now cook up the yam bean fillet. And uh, the point of difference between this recipe and the one I did uh, with the yam bean filling for the dumplings the other day is that I'm gonna use some, um, <coughs> this is ground bean paste, all right? Uh, again, there's a big giant tub because <laughs> I still have a lot of ingredients left over my restaurant days where everything I bought was like in a big like commercial quantities. So I want to actually f uh, sit, uh, fry up some of the dried shrimp and I want some garlic added to it. But I don't, uh, I'm not using fresh garlic today because I can't be bothered uh, mincing it and then having to wash the, um, 
the thing. So I'm using dried garlic here. <laughs> Kettle. <laughs> okay, so in goes the garlic. It's garlic and dried shrimp here. And if you don't have this uh, ground bean sauce, you can leave it out in all honesty, okay? But uh, flavor-wise, it's quite like an intense. It's like, uh, it's like miso, okay? So if, you can, if you've got miso paste, you can use that as well. But if you don't have it, just leave it out, right? Do you ever use a garlic press? <laughs> no, because it looks like it never produces. It, they, they look like they're there for like very, very like um, humble amounts of garlic, right? And I use huge amounts of garlic. Okay, in goes the, the yam bean or hikama, right? And, and from this point on, it's just a matter of cooking it till it's translucent. Okay, so let's add some of the ground bean paste in there. And you want some sugar in this as well, okay? Some sugar and usually I would put a bit of chicken powder, you know me and my chicken powder. You're still doing the mic and camera? Yes, I am actually. So, uh, Carol, you need to get me... Uh, my next giveaway is for the microphone, the Rode microphone. And that's going to be at 1900 followers. So, Carol, go tell your friends to follow me. And um, I'm putting a little bit of chicken powder in here. I want to add some water here. And we're going to cook this up till it's all mixed in. So flavor is not meant to be too intense, okay? Because uh, you're going to get uh, more like the, the spring roll skin once you've made it up. It's going to have like, uh, it's going to be smeared with hoisin sauce and, and, and that's going to bring out a lot of flavor as well. So this is not meant to be like full on, like in your face, salty or whatever, okay? It's meant to be quite flavor neutral. Okay, let's cover this up will do okay good shall i edit the command it still says lenovo mic does it lenovo mic it should say lenovo speaker road microphone yeah no that's um uh, giving away mic me and a minute i will be giving okay can you edit it to just say the video mic the road microphone yeah because the video the 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 mini speaker will be for 1950 because I, I only just g gave away a mini speaker uh, a couple of days ago. Um, so, yeah. Let me check on the gas. So as far as the sauces that go on this, usually you'll have like, you can use like a bottled chili sauce, like a sriracha or something like that, all right? And these are just being uh, smeared on the spring roll skin before you uh, roll everything up. But also uh, you want some hoisin sauce and this is the hoisin sauce I'm gonna be using. This is the Lee Kum Ki hoisin sauce over here. Uh, for, th for, for this particular exercise, we're just gonna use it straight out of the jar. Uh, sometimes like if you're using um, hoisin sauce in other settings what you might need to do is dilute it because the flavor can be a little bit intense okay so you want to dilute it and then you can like um, sweeten it a little bit by adding more sugar and if in the process of diluting it it becomes too watery you can add some thickener like a cornstarch or something like that to it as well uh, the command giveaway has been edited next giveaway at 19 will be a nice and shiny red microphone. <laughs> I don't know about nice and shiny, it's black. <laughs> but you got the idea. Okay. So I've got three more microphones to give away. The other thing I'm going to add to this towards the end is some fried shallots, I think. Um, just to add a little bit of a texture. And also, in all honesty, to bulk it up a little bit. The hikama, hikama in Australia is quite expensive. Cabramatta is, like I said, the cheapest place you can find it. Okay, so I bought this for $6 a kilo. 
which is about five bucks American per kilo. Um, but where I'm at over here in Cogra, uh, I saw it at the shops earlier today and it was 10 bucks a kilo and the quality was really bad. Okay, so um, you, you want to buy Asian, fresh Asian ingredients, Cabramata is really your best bet. Koala, hey, how you doing? I didn't see you. If you didn't give away that, um, I'd like to have. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it works. Uh, how long? How long? How long have you been missing now, Coyote? I haven't seen you for probably at least a month. <laughs> I was tempted to give away, give it away to somebody uh, for charity. We'll see how we go anyway. But there was a time when I was giving these away, like they were running out of style. <laughs> okay, let's cover this up. Okay, Walla, whereabouts are you watching from? Okay, so we're gonna cook this, like I said, uh, till it um, basically all the flavors are absorbed, okay? And this turns into a translucent or near translucent um, um, appearance. I'm just gonna move a couple more things out of the way. I was this close okay well uh, do you have, do you even know who I am no I don't I I don't oh I've seen the VODs and stuff did I miss streams yes you did it's 3 a.m so I'm probably yeah you did hey Remy how you doing okay well uh, Remy's Remy she doesn't know who I am don't tell me it's K <laughs> don't tell me it's K Okay, so if you're Australian, if you're Australian, okay, so other giveaways I've got coming up, this is for Australians only, uh, would be the uh, uh, barbecues galore barbecues. I've got two of them valued at $749 each, okay, but only uh, for Australian addresses. And that's going to be when I hit over 2,000 followers, okay? So you guys got some work to do to get people to follow me, all right? Get all your non-Aussie friends to follow me, then you can like, uh, <laughs> you stand a good chance of winning. All right, and if you're a New South Wales resident, uh, like I said, I've got 10 sets of Ayam uh, packs, sauce packs to give away. They are on their way to me, well, the one that they're going to they're, they're gonna dispatch directly from their premises. Because uh, I don't want to pay $172 in postage costs again like I did the last time I went to the post office. How else would I be a mod already? I don't know, why did you change your stupid name? Kwala, what's Kwala? That sounds very uh. That sounds very uh, African. Kenji K. I thought Kenji K sounded cool. Seal whiskey, one hundred seventy-two dollars. I know, right? <laughs> I sent six parcels, and I hoped I hope Soybean Jenny's got hers because it seems everybody is everybody else has gotten back to me to say they've received theirs. Um, yeah, I sent six parcels, including the original parcel to Soybean Jenny, um, and cost me $172.65. And then, uh, <laughs> Koala. Oh, now I get it. Koala. Koala. Okay. Gotcha. The, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then the, 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 all the Blue Flower products, the 10 winners, all their parcels are on the way to you, okay? So, Unlike me, who likes to sit on the winner's prizes for a few weeks. <laughs> My friend Li Heng, who was, uh, who, you know, who offered up the giveaway, she's dispatched all of them already, okay? So, if you haven't received it, you should very soon, especially if you're in Australia. Koala, I don't know spelling. <laughs> Koala. Okay, so like I said, you want to reduce this till it's uh, all absorbed, okay? You don't want like a runny sauce, okay? Now, uh, about this uh, popia, right? I just got to mention there are a couple of variations to this, okay? Um, the version that I'm making, like I said, I use uh, hoisin sauce as the spread. There are other versions. Uh, some of them actually put the sauce on top. There's a version that uh, kind of like a pseudo um, <coughs> Indian version, <coughs> which apparently uses a 
<laughs> a date sauce, okay, which sounds quite intriguing. I, I've never actually eaten that. So sometimes they put the sauce over the top, sometimes they uh, spread it on the skin on the inside of the spring roll. And then, uh, and I bet the Penangites, they don't even use hoisin sauce for all I know. They might use a uh, shrimp paste based sauce. I, I don't remember now. I'm Georgian. <laughs> Do you guys remember Kettle, Remy, Remy and Kay? You, what was, yeah, Kay, you were there too, right? Remember Kettle with the, the house getting uh, blown up and his dad getting a, uh, getting shot at and whatever? <laughs> That's got to be the most entertain, entertaining campfire ever. So guys, no campfire this Saturday because I'm working both Saturday and Sunday, all right? Um, but if I've got a chance and I've got... <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to you? <laughs> See, Remy was there right in the thick of it. I don't feel so dumb because at least Remy, because Remy's been around, right? And like sometimes you don't know if people are trolling or if they're for real. <laughs> but Remy, you've been around on Twitch, so if you fell for it, I don't feel so bad about falling for it. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. I oh, know. <laughs> Let me taste test this quickly. I remember it. Mm -hmm. When I have doubt, I ask questions. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so it tastes a little bit sweet at the moment. I'm almost inclined to put more salt in it, but I, I want to hold back because it's gonna continue like um, reducing, okay? And the flavors will intensify towards the end. So it's getting there, but in the meantime. In the meantime, this is the I'm good. My dad did actually get sort of pictures. I exaggerated a bit in the exploded house. They only hit my room. I live in Georgia, USA. I moved. I live in Georgia, USA. Right, you were in Georgia as in the country Georgia before. Okay, so this is the spring roll dough, okay? And if you missed it earlier, this is how it looks after it's been like, um, this has already been kneaded and all that by the food, by the uh, dough mixer, okay? So if ever you attempt making this, like I say, if you go to Jackie, uh, my YouTube channel, or you go to my website, all right, uh, jackiem.com.au and just Google Popia, how to make Popia skin. There's a, there's a blog post with a link to my YouTube video. Okay, that's my first ever YouTube video, so don't hold it against me that I've got crappy audio and I'm not even in the shot, all right? But um, the recipe is on the video, okay? And this is how you want it to look, okay? You want it to be so springy, so rubbery, that you can actually hold it up, okay? By hand and just kind of like twirl it around, okay? Now the difficulty, like I said, is that I don't have a thermometer to be able to gauge the temperature of the surface of the uh, pan that I'm gonna be using to cook this with. So um, that will be interesting, okay? Plain. Does <laughs> that allow you to? <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just make sure you grill them, all right? Because remember, 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 you were saying you needed how much money to come to America, okay? To leave Georgia. So this actually does deteriorate after a while, okay? You're gonna find that like um, after a while it turns into sludge if, you, if you've been using it for too long, okay? And you need to, ref you, you ideally wanna keep it refrigerated. I'm gonna try and get in the US claiming I'm a great wall builder and can do it very cheap. <laughs> so that you actually have the money. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in Georgia, you were in Georgia, ex-USSR, and now you're in Georgia in the USA. How convenient is that? <laughs> okay, so 
but it's nearly fully reduced, right? I'm going to throw in the fried shallots now. That's three jobs, was rough. Tell them you're from China. Okay, so a bit of fried shallots in there. You know what I'm missing? I'm missing um I'm missing lettuce, okay? So hopefully you'll be alright. But the lettuce leaf usually acts as a buffer on the spring roll skin so that this kind of like sloppy mixture doesn't kind of like ooze through the skin a bit. So that's the shallots have helped kind of like absorb some of the moisture as well. Okay, so this is done. Let's turn it off. All right, I don't usually use a cast iron um, pan for this, but I'm going to experiment using the cast iron to see how it works, okay? Um, because apparently, traditionally, that's what they use. The hawkers in Malaysia apparently use cast iron skillets. But like I said, my difficulty is that I don't have a thermometer to know. And what they usually do, what they suggest you do is actually you sprinkle a little bit of water to see how quickly it gets absorbed, okay? Um, you, you basically like uh, brush some water on, on it and if you hear that nice sizzle sound it means that it's hot enough um, but it's a very arbitrary <laughs> process so up until now what I've done is actually just pointed a thermometer on it to gauge the temperature PayPal didn't send a small but CC is sent an email but CC is noting my donation did go through twice Wait, you donated. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you don't have to. And sorry, I'm not acknowledging. I turned off all the um, all the widgets because people were saying that it was too loud. I hope you didn't end up paying twice. Uh, I feel really horrible. Okay, while I'm murdered by Remy. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, I don't know if it's hot enough. Like I said, uh. We'll find out in a second. Okay, so this is my my poppy skin. Let's turn it off. Okay, let's try it. Okay, if it's too hot, it won't work. If it's um, too too cold, it won't work. But let's go for it. Okay. Oops. Okay, so that means that it's too hot over there. Okay, if it peels back up. But the idea, you get the idea with smearing the um. the surface here and you want to cook it and I should probably get something to uh, place this on and like you see like these little raised bits here usually you would just use your finger to kind of like press it down okay okay so there you go that's your spring roll skin LB it's a broken one let me just get a plate for it And the thing about the spring roll skin is that they do actually stick together, okay? So, <laughs> a few things you gotta kind of like juggle in the process of making this thing. Okay. Payments did go through, but checking the mail, apparently never sent mail, wasn't much. Okay, cool. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, guys. <laughs> Shout out to Seal Whiskey for the donation. I'm not doing it for sympathy when I mention I pay $172 for shipping. <laughs> I'm just stating it as a fact. All right. Okay. So this is, uh, like I said, I'm going to turn it down again a little bit. Um, okay. So it's too hot. Okay. Because it's peeling back up again as well. So the idea is like I said, the presence of noise. Hey, crunchy. Might want to wait to see it's actually reached your account. <laughs> no, that's all right. it's, the, it's the thought that counts, so I appreciate that. All right. Okay. I'm going to change the pan, all right? This thing is too hot. It's 
so I don't know how the hawkers in Malaysia use uh, cast iron, but apparently it's not working for me. <laughs> I'm going to change the pan over to something else. Okay. So basically you want to cook it and you see that you see that wet patch in the middle. That means it's not done yet because when it's done, it, it will start kind of like turning all white all over. And that's when you know you can peel it off. Okay. Okay. So the middle bit here. I, it probably doesn't help as well that um, this stove is not even, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's generating heat unevenly, so let me just turn it off. Haley. <laughs> See, it is her name. You worked three jobs before moving. <laughs> Remy, you're giving him a hard time. <laughs> Crunchy, I don't even know who you are anymore. Okay, let's try this pan, all right? This wasn't the pan I used to use either, but we're going to try it. This is a scan pan, okay, but it looks like it will work. But the pan I used to use is actually was actually an IKEA pan, all right? But like I said, look, I'm a little bit uh, bothered by the uneven like, heat distribution on this dinky little portable stove. Um, so that might cause problems as well. I used to be very specific even on my blog post. So if you go to jackiem.com.au and how to make popia, uh, you'll find that I actually specify exactly the model of a uh, IKEA pan I was using in my video, which I actually have around the back there. But uh, like I said, it a lot of it is dependent on the kind of surface you're using, you know. Jackie, you don't know that 40 year old man you thought I was at first. <laughs> <laughs> Dog Walker, they paid moderately. That was all he could. <laughs> Remy just kills me. Okay, so when you put the water in and nothing happens, you know it's not hot enough, okay? You want it to sizzle. Like I say, but if you have like a thermometer on hand, you want to get this between 80 degrees and 105 degrees back in the day okay so i used to just kind of zap it and say okay it's hit 80 degrees it's good to go and um if it's not hot enough it will it won't stick if it's too hot it peels off the way it was doing with the cast iron pan okay let's, okay it feels like this is too hot already okay Turn it off. 40 year old man named Haley. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. All right, here you go. Okay. Whoa, perfect. Okay. So, again, like I said, you're going to get a couple of like raised bits there. You just kind of press them down gently with your hand. Okay. And the difficulty is that the heat, uh, the pan surface will continue heating up. So, like I said, I used to do this across, spread across. Uh, two or three different pans, okay? So you see that's the spring roll skin, okay? I used to do this across two or three different pans and then while one's cooling down, I'll use the other one and by the time I've done the next one, the, you know, pan number one will be cooled down enough for me to use. And like I said, this is actually going to st uh, stick together and also it will, it will crisp up as well. You want to cover it. You want to keep it like wet, all right? Let me know next time I'm on the stream if you did get the donations or not, I'll contact PayPal. Oh, okay. Look, don't, yeah, don't stress out too much about it. It's probably, it's probably fine, but yeah. It's very generous of you. Okay. So this will deteriorate, all right, as you, as you use it. Okay, like I said, because you're having it in direct contact with the hot surface. Um, Okay, and essentially you have to kind of like keep balancing this on your other hand to make sure it doesn't fall off. So this is actually a good workout, a good uh, <laughs> bicep workout. <laughs> so press it down. Okay. see it peel off now you know it's done okay let's try it. see it's 
see it's not even sizzling okay so that technique about checking to see if it's done <laughs> by sprinkling water on it it's ready okay okay now it's sizzling let's do this okay you can see it peeling off a little bit over there that means it's too hot over there okay again just press it down from Jack, stop calling me that, Haley. <laughs> Gonna drive to work properly. I had to do everything needed to get here so they knew. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Haley. Okay. How's uh how's King Lear by the way? And how's John Keats? The funniest thing for me is like when I talk to people on Twitch and I realize months later on that they're not who I thought they were at all, as in like gender and age and that sort of stuff. That to me is so odd because there's no way you can tell on Twitch. On Facebook, I know everyone, you know. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. My name is Lasagna. <laughs> The funny thing is like if you look up any like food blog on how to make popia, right? If it's a if it's a food blog from Singapore or Malaysia, they'll tell you how to make the filling and then as for the popia skin, it'll say I'll oh, buy it from the shop. <laughs> so I'm one of the few people outside of Malaysia. I'm one of the few people in the world who actually uh, make a point of learning how to make things from scratch. Because I don't have the luxury of just buying it from my local popia vendor, okay? So that a lot of these food bloggers or like uh, home cooks and whatever, they want to make their own popia at home if they live in Malaysia and Singapore. They make their own filling, but they buy the skin from the shops, all right? What do you think of Remy and I? Okay, see you, Kettle. <laughs> Don't get shot. <laughs> School holiday. Ah, oh, has it already started, Crunchy? Okay, are you uh, working the school holidays, by the way? Are you doing the... Are you doing your job like you did last term? It shows like, then you remember guys, like uh, it was this time last, last term, right? It was school holidays when we just started the Discord server and everyone was all chatty. Nowadays, nobody wants to say hello on Discord, <laughs> including me. I was like, oh God. <laughs> okay, let's turn this off. again okay so you hear the sizzle it means it's ready I don't have to work this holidays okay <laughs> okay yeah because I remember back that school holiday you hurt your uh, your knee right So what are you doing this holidays then? Okay. Why am I having trouble peeling this one off? It's a bit crunchy at the edges. It's getting stuck. Cook it a little bit longer. My hamstring, okay. Chilling like a villain. <laughs> Sweet. 
How's your internet? Have you uh, got it sorted out yet with Optus or? Okay. Look, I might uh, stop making this right soon. Like I said, I'm missing, I'm missing um, lettuce, right? I, I was thinking like, I think that's all the ingredients I need and that's good. I couldn't think of uh, what else I needed. I haven't made it for so long. Like I said, right, if you're, if you're Chinese and you like your pork, you will have the lap chong, the Chinese wax sausage, right? Cut into like, um, yeah, into little discs and fried up, all right? I don't need pork. And if you're Chinese, you'll also have pork lard, all right? Those pork fatty bits. And again, I don't need pork, so none of that either, <laughs> okay? So what you would do is actually to, to pick up the bigger lumps you're actually kind of like it's like blue tack you know you use it you use the bigger batch of dough to kind of like pull up the the unevenness a bit if you know what i mean chinese sausage yeah noise in our road has slowed maybe the man died <laughs> crunchy 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 say she hears she hears noises in her roof so she, she thought that maybe a homeless man was living up in the roof maybe you should check on him crunchy yeah crunchy how's your how's your poetry going how's how's john keats have you gotten to his like really like john keats wrote some really intense love stuff I prefer I prefer William Yates. I like John Keats too. Okay, so again, like that's the spring roll skin, right? And we have Musang, Remy, and I. What do you mean? What do you think about what do you th what do I think about Remy and you? In what in what context? Okay, so here you go. In what context? angling for something because as in like do I hate you guys <laughs> what do you what do you mean okay okay so again just to reiterate to make this right what I did in the morning and in all honesty I just mix it all together so it's like uh, 500 mils of water uh, 500 grams of strong flour essentially what was a tablespoon of oil and I actually added, ta added a tablespoon of tapioca starch that's a little bit arbitrary um, and also a little bit of salt okay mixed it up and then um, several hours later I uh, gotta cover it okay you can cover it with something airtight or you can cover it like with uh, with water essentially you can pour water over the surface of it okay and then drain it out drain out the water at the end of like a few hours they always say eight hours or whatever or overnight or whatever but i didn't i did it for like maybe about five hours or so uh four or five hours and then i threw this into the dough mixer and basically worked it on the lowest um, setting on your dough mixer using the K-whisk, okay, what's known in the Kenwood um, mixer, which I don't have, <laughs> as a K-whisk, uh, K, uh, K um, essentially the one that looks like it's got like a, you know, a shape thing around it, um, as opposed to a dough hook, you can use a dough hook really, okay, it doesn't matter, and work it on like a very low setting, and what happens is that the dough uh, the gluten um, in the process of being kneaded on low setting they, it starts creating like a, a really rubbery texture with this okay so do it for about 10 minutes or so longer if you can and this is what you end up with right okay what do you think of us do I hate you guys? I don't hate you guys. In the West Philadelphia, born and raised. What are you talking about? I'm <laughs> Okay. Okay, you and Remy are some of my favorite moderators, if that's what you're gunning at. Is that what you want? There you go, I said it. Uh, 
the hell did you just take Haley what is that traditionally done in a circular pan or square pan it's actually traditionally done on a big flat I uh, griddle right um, so not in a pan like this so the street food vendors they'll have like a big uh, cast iron apparently is what uh, they are griddle and of course like the whole using the thermometer the laser thermometer thing was something that I came up with right because uh, I had to figure out how to find out what the temperature range was but obviously if you've been doing it for like 30 years on the street you don't have to worry about using a thermometer and I'm not using one now in all honesty I do have actually like a sunbeam like um, electric griddle that you put but it's a rectangular shape and also the surface is like um, um, kind of like how would you say it it's like it's textured okay so I don't know but basically the electric griddle allows me to control the temperature right so in theory that would work better okay but I just don't know if the surface actually is conducive for me to to doing something like this on it oops you see that's when you know it's too hot the whole thing just kind of pull, peels up okay so that's the difficulty with doing something like this if you don't know what the surface temperature is okay I refuse to follow Jackie's steps yeah then <laughs> then don't okay you can eat your uh, KFC forever see if I care how's your job going um, Kaylee crunchy shut up crunchy I don't know <laughs> what do you mean I'm making a I'm making spring roll skin all right there's a very highly desired skill see like you know I, I reckon I can travel anywhere around the world and just walk into a restaurant and say I know how to make poppy skin and they'll hire me on the spot am I right people out there walk into any Malaysian restaurant in the world assuming I ever get that desperate you know okay I'm done with this okay <laughs> but uh, you see towards the end the dough does deteriorate becomes less rubbery okay so you can actually throw it back in the dough mixer and work it again um, but ideally just keep it a little bit like refrigerated so that it becomes a little bit firmer before you work this um, let's move this now we're going to assemble the spring rolls I don't even know why I'm making this oh, oh well, I do I'm, I'm making it because I've got the hickama and I, I want it to use up okay but um, I'm not exactly craving this dish at the moment I'm not feeling too great. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, so I've got the spring roll skin here. Like I said, they do tend to start to stick together. Okay, and you want to keep them covered with a damp cloth to make sure that they don't dry out, right? Just cover this up. let's do this good job Jackie just ignored your question what question what happened what did I miss I've been be watching you do this for 30 minutes look like I said you know people pay me good money to learn how to do this sort of stuff you're, you're getting to watch it for free and you're whining okay uh, oops, oops, I guess Okay, so let's do this. Hoisin sauce, right? Okay, straight out of the jar. Or Malaysians, for whatever reason, um, don't uh, don't connect hoisin sauce with uh, what we call team jong. It's the same thing, all right, guys. So if you're Malaysian, sometimes I get, oh, why are you using hoisin sauce? Because literally, hoisin sauce means seafood sauce, uh, whereas uh, hoisin sauce in Malaysia that you get at a store. <sighs> you know when you eat out and that sort of stuff and they give you the sauce they call it sweet sauce literally tim jong um so they don't realize it's actually poison sauce okay so it's the same thing okay 
you want chili? This is my the chili that I made myself the other day, right? But essentially any bottled chili will work. So what you want to do? Oh yeah, I've got to cut up, slice up the egg omelette, okay? So you just want to cut this into thin strips. So did I answer your question, Kay, or was there something else you were angling for? No, compro. Okay. Okay, let's do this. I can hear no one in the background getting a bit excited about his show. Okay. I'll get a nicer one. Okay. So if you've got two broken ones, you can actually kind of like uh, combine them, all right? But what you want? So you've got the hoisin sauce. Smear it. Right. Smear some chili sauce on it if you if you take chili. Okay, I'm killing my I don't usually use things straight out of the bottle like this, guys. I'm a little bit more hygienic than that. It's just some Okay. Like I said, usually if you have lettuce, you put the lettuce on here. Um but let's put something dryish, okay. Because the thing that's going to kind of like um be most kind of like volatile is the is this here because it's is hot and also it's um, got a lot of wa water content in it. Okay, so you put that and then you can put some fried shallots. So you've got the other stuff, the porky stuff, you can put them in here. But I've got some homemade fried shallots, put it over here. Okay, and what you do, fold it up like this, fold it up here, pull it up. And there you go, that's your papia. Let me just get a knife. And also what you do is cut it up. Okay, so this was so such a rarity back in my day when I had my restaurant. Rarity, as in like most Malaysian restaurants didn't know how to make it, that uh, they sent around a Sydney Morning Herald, which is basically the Sydney equivalent of the New York Times. They sent around a, basically a food spy, right? Like a food critic. Um, and their review are uh, theme based or dish based all right so <clears throat> this particular food reviewer was trying to track down which restaurants in uh sydney actually can make this dish authentically all right so she went to all these other malaysian restaurants and she was really really disappointed right like i said you know if you want to compromise you can use like uh frozen spring roll skin right or you can do like just make a fried spring roll or whatever. So all these other restaurants who put down popia on the menu were basically doing that. And she heard about my restaurant as being the only one who makes them fresh like this. But unfortunately, I made them like on and off whenever I felt like it. You see how much work it takes just to make like um, about 10 sheets of popia skin. And also jicama is a little bit hard to come by, right? So... So I would only make it when I could get jicama or I could um, find time to make the skin, okay, because I did everything else in my restaurant. So she actually kind of had to uh, not break the rule, right, but kind of like make a concession by calling me up and telling me that <laughs> she's actually the food spy, but she needs to know when I will have popia on my menu next so she knew to come in on that day, you know, as opposed to randomly showing up and finding out. I'm not doing it. So that's how she ended up covering. That's how she actually uh, ended up reviewing my popia. And um, basically thought it was amazing, of course, being the only place who could actually make it <laughs> for real, <laughs> right? A bit more, a bit more. But of course, I had the, uh, you know, by virtue of the fact that I knew she was coming, I, I, I could make sure that, like, I didn't end up serving her a dud by accident. <laughs> okay, so there you go.
people pay for this. <laughs> there you go. So that's my popia, right? It looks a little bit ragged, but you get the idea. The spring roll skin. I'm gonna eat one. <laughs> mm. Mm. No, my question is what was what was what is your original thoughts on us and have they changed? What do you mean? <laughs> Who is Mario? Oh sleepy Mario. <laughs> Lasagna. <laughs> Um, who's Rodney? Hmm. Pesto. I've never like yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I, I've like been quite um, attached to pesto to this point. Okay, so well there you go. I'm gonna update my blog post, right? Or I'm gonna write a new blog post how to make poppy skin just so I can actually have an excuse to embed this video on my website. But um there you go. Easy enough, right guys? Anyone attempts this? Anyone attempts any of my dishes, post it on social media and tag me. Or you can post it on Discord if you're one of those. Um and tag me so I can see. And I should offer giveaways for people who actually attempt my food, I reckon. Hmm. What are you guys talking about? Um, yeah, well, there you go. Easy enough, right? Um, so my next giveaway, like I said, 1900 guys. You got work to do. <laughs> 1900 for the Rode microphone drawer. Um, I've got three more Rode microphones and I've got two more, I believe, uh, Lenovo mini speakers to give away. And I've got 10 sets of Ayam uh, sources to give away, but that's restricted to New South Wales residents. I mean, the funny thing was when I did the giveaways for the um, uh, the Blue Flower products, right? All the all the Australian winners were all actually from Melbourne. So for whatever reason, <laughs> either Sydney ciders are just slackers, right? Or um, <laughs> or or Melbourneites are more intense about uh, Malaysian cooking, so. A whole bunch of Melbourne Knights and the rest of them were overseas people. So, um, and the other giveaway, like I said, that I've got lined up is for the barbecues galore barbecues, the Ziggy barbecues, right? And I'm gonna draw those when I hit 2000 followers. So, we're about 150 plus away from that. How do you enter? Uh, you just follow me. <laughs> So I, use, I basically use, um, you know, an, just an automated tool to draw the winner. And for the smaller prizes, you just have to be around when it's drawn and just respond. <laughs> um, so you don't actually have to do anything. You just have to make sure you're a follower on Twitch, right? And your name's picked and you have to respond within a certain period, okay? So for the smaller prizes, like the, like the Blue Flower products and the IM products and whatever, you just... Make sure you're watching <laughs> when I draw. <laughs> um, and then just say, hey, I'm here, okay, and whatever. Send me food. I already did, right? Those, what are those sticks again? They're so gross, I don't know how you can eat them. But next time I send you a parcel, I still have like all these leftover candy. and But they're not all the good ones, they're all the crappy ones, like, uh, yeah, cookies and stuff like that, which I'm not, I don't even eat. Like, if there were Tim Tams, I'd eat them myself, but yeah. I still have like the... Yeah, a bunch of different types of cookies and some lollies, right, sort of thing. But <laughs> I have some chicken. <laughs> right. Well, there you go, guys. Is that easy enough? Show me what they are. Oh, okay, hang on.
And by that I mean that they're not ones that I eat, alright? So I have a whole bunch of tiny teddy teddies because I bought a big box of them with like 15 packs or 15 or 20 packs of tiny teddies. There's a crunchy here. The Sam Boy. I've got a bunch of like these Sherbies and Minties and a lot of shapes. Again, shapes I bought like a box of like 15 packs or something like that. So they're not stuff that I eat, basically. So all the chocolatey stuff are all gone, except for the crunchy. <laughs> so you are a second entry. What's your website called? Um, okay, I will eat all of these. I know you will. The um, who was it again? Um, you guys know um, what's his name? Holy moly, Brad. Brad from uh, Louisiana, right? Because you you were giving him a hard time on Discord. Who who are you and whatever? But Brad from Louisiana is one of the sweetest kids around. And he won like the lollies. Well, he actually won the mini speaker. I, I basically filled up his parcel with lollies as well. And then he told me that he's trying to lose weight. I said, like, damn, I shouldn't have sent it to him. <laughs> I know, shapes, right? <laughs> <coughs> give him a hard time. Get oh, I didn't give it. Yes, you did. You know who the F, I, who the F is this, you know? Who the F is Brad and whatever. <laughs> yeah, but no, he 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 tolerated you, so he's still around. He didn't get you. He didn't uh, get scared off by you. Wait, Jackie, are those the new shapes? Is that new shapes or they they're just regular shapes, right? I don't know. I don't eat this stuff. Original flavor and whatever. Original barbecue. I don't eat. I don't eat that. So it's tolerated me. <laughs> Since hearing of a candy called shape gives me thinking of blanc mange. What's blanc mange? <laughs> What's the the uh, see? See, your whiskey knows all this food that I have no idea about. You know. Damn! I've got all this. I got all this spring roll skin. I've got all this filling and I've got no inclination to eat it. I think I'm gonna have to make it for my neighbors. Unfortunately, this is something that like, um, once you make it, you need to pretty much eat it right away because it will deteriorate, right? Because um, you can't reheat it and that sort of stuff. You wanna eat it fresh. The skin will start like breaking up and all that as well. I might make some for my neighbors and give it to them. I've got some old people living around me. They're, they're really sweet people. But sometimes you go knocking on their door and they're not home sort of thing. You don't wanna intrude on them too much. But I met this uh, uh, one of my old neighbors downstairs today, earlier today. His name's Brian, 83 years old. And he had like shingles. I said I hadn't seen him for a while. So it's because he's been indoors. And he's got shingles on his head and neck, right around the back. And I, I didn't realize that shingles creates like these really black scabs. I don't know if you guys like know much about shingles. Apparently they usually like, um, you usually get it around the tummy, but he had it on his head. And he said he was in agony for two weeks, but like, but the back of his head looks all black. It looks scaly and black. It's unbelievable. And apparently that's uh, scarring from shingles. It's crazy. Um, yeah, poor fella. Blomon's called shape. Is that right? Send he shakes. Send me what you're making. Basically, milk, vanilla extract, sugar, milk, vanilla extract, m vanilla extract, sugar and cornstarch, lemon zest. So what is it? Uh, is it like chilled or what is it? Hey, voila. <laughs> Crunchy, you know, uh, there's actually, you're actually allowed to post YouTube links on my chat based on the current, like, um, um, exceptions. Okay, it's a pudding. Okay, I'm gonna have to Google it. What video is this, Crunchy? It says link deleted. Not at my end. Like a pudding custard consistency. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds interesting. The um, I wonder if you can Asianize it, make it like a lychee blancmange or something like that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the 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 the, um, the Facebook stream. All right. So if you're watching on Facebook, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv/jackiemfood. 
um, that's where you get to win prizes and it's actually free to follow me on Twitch, all right guys? Um, so just hit the follow button or hit the heart button if you're watching this on the Twitch app uh, on your mobile, right? Um, but yeah, so uh, make sure you go visit jackiem.com.eu if you're after this and all my other recipes. Okay, I do have a pre-existing recipe for this if you just do a search on my website for Bopia. Uh, otherwise, I'll post a newer, like I said, that's, that blog post is like seven years old. <laughs> so I'll post a newer one uh, in due course, all right, once I get on top of all my other stuff. But thank you so much for watching. I'm just going to kill the uh, Facebook stream. Uh, there you go. Okay, cool. What are you talking about? It's on Facebook too. Yeah, it's, um, that's your adult. <laughs> I was multi-streaming, right? Because, um, like I said, my Facebook audience has resisted coming over to Twitch, so I figured, well, I might as well reach out to them. And um, and I'm also actually streaming on Periscope, right? So if you're watching on Periscope, uh, there was a time about a year ago, I did like 30 days of Periscope streams um, on 30 Asian ingredients, and that was kind of fun. But now I gave up after that, because like Periscope, like I, I'm not a huge fan of streaming from my mobile, right? Because I had a crappy mobile. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting experiment. But like, you know, Periscope has its limitations to me, okay? It lacks a lot of the features that you get with Twitch. Um, so my Periscope account has not been touched um, for about a year until like a, a couple of weeks ago when I started using Restream to multi-stream to Periscope and all that. And of course I used to stream on YouTube as well. So this is multi-streaming on YouTube where I cop a lot of abuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've thought about setting up a Tumblr blog about uh, and posting all these abusive messages I got on uh, I get on YouTube, and <laughs> but uh, tell Kyle to invite me. Shexting, who's Shexting? <laughs> but you're off to crunchy, other mod. Trying to start. Let's see. White cake. I'm gonna eat this. Forty two eighty three, are you new here? You want food, you gotta earn it, Kay. When was the last time I saw you on Campfire? The um So like I said, if you're um if you're around in Sydney this weekend, Saturday, I'm going to be um over at the Rivendell Flower Show, Saturday and Sunday. Uh I will have stalls there, but I, I will personally be there on the Saturday. And um, just look up, just Google Rivendell, R-I-V-E-N-D-E-L-L, Rivendell Flower Show. You should be able to find information about it. And it's the patron is uh, Don Burke, uh, the uh, iconic Australian gardener. And it's held on the grounds of this building where they shot Superman Returns, right? So in the movie Superman Returns, if you've seen it, uh, Lex Luthor's mansion is actually the building where the flower show is going to be held at, right? So go and check it out. And on Sunday, I will be in Cabramatta doing cooking demonstrations on stage um, as part of the Cabramatta Moon Festival. So I will be there on stage. Um, Dami will be there, the Korean um, singer who won. Did she win? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't watch reality TV. Um, yeah, she's going to be there. Uh, Peppa Pig's going to be there. <laughs> and uh, the Minions are going to be there, all right? So I'm in good company. <laughs> How should you prefer to be on the wig and your monkey? <laughs> I just got a pound of beef. Do you have any tips? You mean beef? Or are you trying to start beef? <laughs> well, yeah, 42, 83. What? <laughs> You've lost us. <coughs> Sleepy Mario. Oh, no, thanks for hanging around, Sleepy Mario. What time is it in Taiwan at the moment? I can't believe you're watching from Taiwan. I think you're like my first... Uh, over Taiwanese, well, uh, yeah, from Taiwan. <laughs> K, don't be mean. <laughs> See what I mean about K being like, uh, <laughs> being scary. 
uh, almost 5 p.m. All right, so you guys are what behind us? Is that right? I kind of thought that Taiwan would be ahead of us because uh, it's like 7 p.m. here. Oh, Taiwan's two hours behind us, like Remy. Okay, okay. Uh. Oh, yeah, I always thought that Taiwan would be like Japan in terms of time zone. Mm. <laughs> Biff cuts. <laughs> You guys. <laughs> Biff. Yeah, 4283. <laughs> yeah, somebody help help him with the Biff. What time you on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, K doesn't mess around. He's, he's serious too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sh uh, Shakespeare, did you change your um, um, your name or something like that? I'm trying to figure out who you are, Shakespeare. Color me confused. <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> so Shakespeare, whereabouts are you? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't. Um, then challenge K, um, yeah. <laughs> K, can, K can be more racist than me and that's saying something. <laughs> but Shakespeare, whereabouts are you? And 4283, whereabouts are you? Mm. LT Burnham, are you in Sydney, are you? You know, I'm not a good person to ask this sort of questions because I don't actually go eat Malaysian food that much because um, I already cook it myself. Um, but to me, Papa Rich does a pretty good nasi lemak. Have you been to Papa Rich? I'm in Biga. All oh, right, okay. I live in America. I was just curious about this man speaking on Viv. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Biff. No, I haven't been to Papa Ridge. I know where it is. What I do at Papa Ridge, if I order the nasi lemak, I ask for extra sauce on the curry, because otherwise, to me, it feels like the, the yeah, it feels like the the chicken curry uh, needs more sauce, so you can kind of like, yeah, kind of like soak the rice in it. Um, but not many people, you know, I. I because I used to own a restaurant, I don't like um, reading like reviews that list like um, 10 best or 10 must visit places and that sort of stuff because when I'm left off the li list, I then think, well, you know, that was a stupid list. <laughs> you know what I mean? Obviously, um, whoever wrote the review failed to go to my restaurant to check it out sort of thing. So I'm very um, sensitive every time I write any blog posts that covers like places to eat and that sort of stuff that I don't. Um, kind of like use these kinds of like exclusionary terms, right? I just say kind of I can say my um, places are visited, right? Or I can say are oh, my favorite or something like that, but I wouldn't call them the best in the world or sort of, you know, best on the planet or something like that. Um, but that's just me, you know? So when I, uh, if you own a Malaysian restaurant or any kind of restaurant anywhere and you catch me out talking about like somebody's fantastic like beef burger or something like that that is the best i've had it doesn't mean that i don't think yours is better it just means that i haven't had the chance to visit your <laughs> your your premises okay that's all it means okay so don't take exception to it the way i used to <laughs> so uh as far as nasi lemak i haven't actually eaten like nasi lemak at that many places i have tried the papa rich one which i think is just well um there's an indonesian place in surrey hills it's called Medan Chia, Medan, M-E-D-A-N, Chia, spelled C-I-A-K. And their, their coconut rice, uh, they don't serve it as part of a nasi lemak, they serve it with other dishes, but their coconut rice is extremely aromatic, so you've got to try it uh, if ever you do go there. Um, a bit <laughs> Nazi, oh my damn. Uh, Medan Chia, yeah. Not <laughs> a lot of people get it wrong, you know. Nas, Nazi Nazi means rice, right? Nazi means like Adolf Hitler. Okay, but there used to be when I used to trade at the markets, there used to be a guy there who 
um, was actually from Shanghai in China, but because he figured that um, Singaporean Malaysian food was more popular, he ran a market store and he called himself like a, the kind of like the best um, cha kui diao or whatever, Singapore cha kui diao or something like that, right? And his only claim to being uh, like his only connection to Singapore was the fact that his wife's brother-in-law was from Singapore. Okay, so he didn't grow up in Singapore, he whatever, but it tasted nothing like Singaporean cha kui diao. But um, he also had other dishes on the menu, but of course he used like Malay words to make it sound like he was from that country. So he had nasi goreng, which is fried rice, and he spelled it nazi, N-A-Z-I, nazi goreng, okay? So like any Malaysian or Singaporean who read it will just kind of like think of, uh, obviously, you know, he's confusing nazis and nasi sort of thing, but... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, the correct spelling is N-A-S-I. Uh, Tell me your Twitter if I'll get banned with that. Forty two eighty three, where are you from? <laughs> I can't believe you guys are having a fight over beef. Alright. <laughs> So 40, 4283, where are you from? Shakespeare, <laughs> yeah, how could your mods be so mean to a foreign <laughs> beef steak? Is... <laughs> yeah, beef steak, right? <laughs> India, <laughs> more welcoming. <laughs> uh, India, come on, Indians, Indians know beef and beef. Indians don't eat beef mostly e either, right? <laughs> Which part of India? <laughs> yeah, look, K, K is really hardcore. Well, there you go, guys. I think that's uh, enough for tonight, right? Okay, so like I said, the feature ingredient is the spring roll skin which looks really lame to anyone who has no appreciation for Malaysian um, popia will have no idea what the big fuss was all right but those who have been longing to eat Malaysian popia now you know how to make it and you can have a go at it yourself at home if you're using a laser thermometer like I said um, first of all you want a decent non-stick pan all right a cheapo um, you know those cheapo coated pans will not work all right this is a proper scan pan otherwise you can use an ikea pan which i mentioned on my uh, blog at jackiem.com you just do a search for popia um so you want something that's got like you know as heavy base and also non-stick and um, smooth surface um but yeah and ideally invest in a laser thermometer because you want to get the surface of your pan between 80 to 105 degrees okay not hot enough it will not uh, stick too hot it will it will peel off okay um so hopefully that will be helpful are you playing laser tag what about laser gun you can use the laser gun <laughs> yeah lt burnham thanks uh, thanks for coming around and saying hello <laughs> new delhi okay <laughs> there you go okay you got a new uh <laughs> 82 uh, 42 83 laser gun cooking you know, you never know, it might work, you know, you, should, you, should, you know, if I can combine gaming with cooking, I think I'll be on to something with Twitch, right? <laughs> okay, guys, so my next broadcast is Friday, um, 6pm, okay, I'm tempted to kind of like move it, uh, yeah, because I'm going to be a little bit full on over the next few days, and um, are you a gamer? Nope, I am not. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thanks for the donation, Sia Whiskey. Sia Whiskey, by the way, guys, everyone is the most awesome person on the planet <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> My boot for XP. <laughs> I don't game at all. <laughs> and um, yeah, okay, right here. So Friday, 6 p.m. Sydney time, which is GMT plus 10. All right, guys, is my next broadcast, which is about this time in two days. And then... Um, uh yeah weekend i'll be busy so no campfire this weekend but i look forward to seeing you again this friday all right thanks guys hopefully hopefully by then i will have the uh some giveaways to offer up 
All right, so next giveaway, 1900 for the Rode microphone. But the IM, IM giveaways, I won't have any kind of like restrictions to them, just whatever, as long as you're um, New South Wales based, because that's the criteria set by uh, IM themselves. I will drop a follow. Thank you, very kind. <laughs> Cal Boots for XP. What side of the family you get your laugh from? <laughs> Who knows? Cal Boots for XP. Am I saying <laughs> am I saying it right? Okay, bye guys. Uh, bye, uh, Kay and Remy uh, and all my mods and all my subs. Uh, Shexting and thanks. Uh, uh, see your whiskey again and everyone else for watching. Right? Thanks, guys. I'll see you again. Ciao.